من ملبورن استراليا انا بحييكم وتحديدا من امام منزل السيد مايكل سكر وهو شخصيه سياسيه برز اسمه بالمجتمع الاسترالي وشاب قدر انجز الكثير بعمر صغير خلينا سوا نتعرف عليه ببروفايل Mr. Michael Sikka, thank you for welcoming us in your house in Melbourne. I know you're a member of the Federal Parliament in Australia. You were born here in 1981, but your father immigrated from Sherry, from Lebanon, in 1966. Correct. Tell us more about your father, why he immigrated, why did he come to Australia? Well, firstly, welcome and thank you. It's a great honour to be involved uh, in your program. Uh, it is a great honour. My father arrived here in 1966. Uh, he came over when he was 18. And uh, at that time, it was prior to the Civil War, uh, but he was trying to find new opportunities for himself. He grew up in Bashari and uh, he very fondly remembers that time, but uh, he was trying to find new opportunities. And in the end, uh, he came to Australia and like so many Lebanese was able to make a great success of uh, this country. Uh, he was involved in business uh, and ultimately uh, he provided me and my siblings with all of the opportunities that he never had through his hard work and determination. And uh, now as a uh, son of a Lebanese migrant, I'm in the federal parliament. And yes, and so they should be proud of you, I'm sure. Well, it says two things. Um, that uh, firstly, wherever, I'm sure you know this better than, than anyone, wherever you go around the world and you find Lebanese people, and they, they, are they flourish. Indeed. And secondly, in a country like Australia, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter how much money you've got, if you work hard, you can succeed and you can reach the heights. So that is a wonderful testament to this country as well. It's beautiful, beautiful. Uh, you, your father came, so he immigrated from Lebanon and he came, he, he worked as an entrepreneur in many fields, I, I imagine. It was hard then. Yes. Maybe it's, it's easier for you today as an Australian from Lebanese descent to adapt yourself to this uh, country because it is your uh, country. Correct. What are the main difficulties he encountered when he came? Obviously he did encounter some difficulties when he arrived. I mean when my father arrived in Australia in 1966 there wasn't that many Lebanese here and uh, like any new group or wave of migrants uh, uh, you partly fear uh, things you don't understand and uh, as far as Australians go they're very tolerant, very open, very accepting. But there were some occasions where I think my dad struggled. But as more and more Lebanese came to Australia, to the point now where we have many hundreds of thousands of Lebanese in Australia, Indeed. I think there's a, an appreciation that Lebanese migrants to this country just want to work hard. They want to provide for their family. They have a strong faith and they want to do the best for our country. So uh, whilst it was difficult at the beginning, the Lebanese reputation now is very strong and people are very proud to, um, to let everybody know that they are Lebanese heritage and, and Australians really respect uh, Lebanese people for that reason. Good to know, yes, I noticed it. How have you been raised? Because your dad is Lebanese, mm. but he married an Australian. Yeah. So you have a mixture of both cultures. Mm. Uh, do you think you had more of your Lebanese roots? Um, well, my father's family, after he migrated to Australia, his brothers and sisters and his parents, my grandparents came to Australia. So I had a big 
Lebanese family. And even though, yes, my mother was Australian and obviously I had that influence at home, I was I always felt very much part of a big Lebanese family. And being um, Maronites as well, we attended a Maronite church. Mm. So we were every Sunday we would be with other Lebanese, Lebanese families. families and community members too. So I suppose I've always felt very much... Uh, absolutely a part of the, the Lebanese culture and community. But uh, like anybody who's got parents with two different ethnicities, sometimes you never feel 100% in one or the yeah. other. Uh, you never feel 100% Australian because, of course, I've got this Lebanese background. And then sometimes you don't feel 100% Lebanese either because I'm born here in Australia. Yes, so. Of there is a sense in which you choose the best of both. And oh. that's where I'm very, very fortunate that I've been able to pick and choose the best aspects of both cultures. But you're probably right, coming from a big Lebanese family, I was very, very involved in the Lebanese side of things as well. You told us about the good sides of being a Lebanese and the good sides of being an Australian. Can, what are the good sides of being or both? Sure. Well, definitely from a Lebanese side, being very generous. I mean, Lebanese people are known for their generosity, their warmth. When you come to mm. our homes, we want to look after you. That is one of the great things from the Lebanese side of things. From the Australian side, um, we, we can laugh at ourselves. We don't take ourselves too seriously. Um, if we're having a bit of fun, I'm not going to get offended because we don't, you know, we, we just don't take ourselves very seriously, which is a nice quality in my view. So um, there's lots of others, but for me, definitely the generosity uh, of, of is of something the that, of the Lebanese is something that I've, uh, I, I've definitely tried to emulate as much as I can. I noticed that the Australians are very cool, they don't worry, and we Lebanese are all the time on our nerves. <laughs> so I feel that being born here, and even if you were raised with a Lebanese father, you have this cool side of Australia. Well, I think, I think because Australia has enjoyed, we've enjoyed prosperity, we've enjoyed um, relative uh, in a sense, we've been shielded from a lot of the issues that have occurred around the world, um, whether that be wars or, or other issues. We haven't had that. We do have that calm, easygoing attitude because we're a product of our environment. Now, yes. people like my father and uh, any Lebanese citizen who's lived through um, turmoil at home, I can understand why... Uh, you know, your average Lebanese person's a little more, um, a little less relaxed, yes. shall we say. Yeah, because it's very natural. It's natural because we're living in a country that is unstable with a lot of political issues, yes. economic issues. I think this is also, and we are survivors. Nah, <laughs> So we don't live daily, we survive daily. This is the, sure. the difference. But, but that's part of the success of Lebanese. Of course, because, yes. you know, they they came to Australia and they saw these amazing opportunities. Indeed. And there was no excuses not to be able to go and get them. Indeed. And uh, that's, I mean, really where our strength comes from because we don't take anything for granted. Mm -hmm. And if you want to achieve something, you've got to work hard and make it happen. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Uh, Lebanese are ambitious and stubborn, so <laughs> if they have something in mm. mind, they want to get it. My wife's Australian and she's very stubborn too. So. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> it's, it's good to know and we will talk about this later, of course. Um, you have two sisters and two brothers. Yeah. You get along with them. Do you meet always on Sundays with, the, with your parents? Yeah. Do you still have these Lebanese habits? We're a very close-knit family. Uh, we, uh, we have a bit of distance now. My parents live in another state. My brother is a lawyer in London. So uh, we're a little bit spread around the world. But 
when we all lived in Melbourne, we had all those traditions. We would have lunch together on a Sunday. Uh, we'd go to church together. Uh, obviously, you know, the big occasions, Christmas and Easter, and we would have all of those occasions together. But we're a very close-knit family. And again, uh, we've got a very close extended family. So I've got so many cousins. Um, and when we get together... There's like a hundred people, you know, and that's just <laughs> yeah. the immediate group. The big family from Friday. Yeah, correct. <laughs> Meeting in Australia. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's very, it's been very important to my father that those traditions have continued, and um, you know, family, uh, regardless of where you're from, family it's is the most, the most important. important thing. Indeed, indeed. You went to Equanas College, and then you had your degree in law from Deakin University. Why did you choose to be a lawyer? Do you like it? Yeah, look, I loved being a lawyer. Uh, so I did a degree in commerce and law. It was five years at university. And then I started practicing uh, law. Um, and I but was a lawyer for about 10 years before mm -hmm. I entered parliament. I, I loved the law. Mm -hmm. uh, I found it very challenging. I, uh, and you worked into corporate law. I was in corporate law. I worked for a lot of large multinational corporations who were my clients. Uh, so I tr traveled the world with that job. It was very fulfilling. I enjoyed the intellectual challenge. Uh, so look, I, I loved law. I didn't always want to be a lawyer, but um, when I graduated, I was fortunate. I, I s surprised myself and got good grades and suddenly had these opportunities open to me to go into law. So I did and it was a, I'm very pleased I did because uh, it provided me a lot of opportunities that uh, I was able to take in my career and it also set me up well for a political for career right, yeah. because there are a lot of skills that are very similar Indeed. between the two. Indeed. Anyways, we will be talking about your political career that is very interesting, but after this break. عدد الجيل اللبنانية في أستراليا إلى 400 ألف بتوزعوا خاصة ما بين ملبون وسيدني واليوم الجيل اللبنانية بأستراليا تعد من أهم عشرة جيليات لبنانية بالعالم Then by the end of our first term the economy was one of the fastest growing economies in the G20 As a young member of the parliament are you working on projects for the young generation? The first priority as government is to keep our people safe. لو خلق هون بملبورن مايكل سكر متأثر كتير بوالده وبأصله اللبناني بنلاحظ قد ايه العيلة مهمة له وكيف بعدهم عندهم هالتقاليد اللبنانية وحتى انه بيو اللي شجعه انه يدخل حق السياسة وهيدا عن جد بيأثر فينا نحن كتير خاصة انه هو خلق بأستراليا وممكن وأمه أسترالية ومتزوج أسترالية ولكن بعده محافظ على حبه الكبير للوطن. Well, when I was first uh, asked to appear on this program, I was uh, very excited actually to be able to um, be involved in a program that was going to uh, be seen by so many Lebanese people. Uh, it's the first time that I'd ever been asked to appear uh, on a television program in Lebanon. So whilst I've done a lot of media uh, in Australia, this was a new experience for me and uh, one that I was very pleased to be involved in. Mr. Sikar, you were involved into politics when you joined the Liberal Party in 2003. Why did you join it? Well, I've always been fascinated with politics and particularly having 
a Lebanese father around the dinner table, we were always talking about politics. And he was often talking about Lebanese politics, which is very complicated. Oh, indeed. Uh, so I grew up in a home where politics was something that we spoke about all the time. When I graduated from university and I started working, I thought that was a perfect time to join the party. I was obviously very heavily involved with my work, but I was also just getting involved with understanding you know, what the party was doing. And 10 years later, uh, after being involved in the party for that long and serving in different ways, uh, I was very fortunate to be selected as our candidate for federal elections. So Indeed. But before being elected, why did you join this party and what was your responsibility sure. uh, as a member of this party? Well, the, um, the Liberal Party reflects my values, which are uh, that the inherent strength of a society is found in its individuals, it's found in its families. We encourage... Uh, free enterprise. We don't want government to stifle people's ability to live their own life. I mean, that is the philosophy of our party. We think that individuals are the best people to decide how they live their life. Mm-hmm. So we believe in small government. That was always consistent with uh, my values. And um, I'm also a conservative member of the Liberal Party. So I believe in Uh, I believe in keeping the institutions and the values that have stood the test of time. Only. You know, don't change something just for the sake of it. We should only change things if necessary. Indeed. And uh, that's why. You were elected uh, as a member of the federal parliament in 2013. Um, You were elected by, of course, the people that are in your region. Yes. like around 150,000 people. Uh, were you um, expecting that? Well, I'd campaigned uh, since 2012, so I had been... You were well prepared. I was, yes, I was very much campaigning full-time for a long, long period of time. I was expecting to be elected, but you never, you, you never count your chickens until they've hatched, is a, a saying we have. Uh, we were expecting good things, but until you count the votes, you don't know. Um, we obviously, uh, we were the, my party, the Liberal Party, was coming into government. Uh, there was great sentiment in our favour. Uh, the former government was unpopular. So we had uh, optimism, we were optimistic about yeah. our chances. Um, and in that sense... I think we were well prepared once we were elected and once I was elected as well. I know that you have a lot of supporters, but I wanted to know who really encouraged you to uh, stand for this nomination. Well, um, my wife, Mm -hmm. uh, I remember very vividly, uh, we were on our summer vacation and uh, in Australia when you go on vacation, you go and we, we, we go and relax at the beach. Mm-hmm. And I remember very vividly talking to my wife and saying, what do you think? And she was a huge encouragement. She uh, really felt as though it was a meaningful uh, objective. Uh, of course, my parents were huge supporters. My father, yeah, father as a typical, typical parent, had always said to me, you should be prime minister one day. Uh, uh, yes, why not? And so he'd always encouraged me to... Um, consider life in politics. So I spoke to my wife, I spoke to my parents, I spoke to friends and other supporters and everybody said, now's the time to do it. And, um, and I felt that it was the time. Was the time. Some people thought, are you too young? Because I was only 32 at the time. And you were maybe uh, then the youngest one or one of the youngest? I was one of the youngest. Mm-hmm. Um, My view was uh, you really shouldn't allow age to be a barrier. Uh, This is why your slogan? This was your... It wasn't my slogan, no, but it could have been a slogan uh, that I could have used. Uh, But if a job has to be done, you shouldn't allow age or other excuses get in the way of what needs to happen. And 
And I believe that I was the best person to represent this electorate, so that was the time to make it happen. Yes, indeed. What did you promise in your campaign? And did you, uh, di did you achieve what you promised? Well, we did. I mean, as a government, we, there were a couple of uh, taxes that the former government had imposed and we had promised to remove them. Um, we didn't think they were efficient, so we delivered that. We repealed the carbon tax, as we call it, and the mining tax. Locally, I had a lot of commitments locally for local infrastructure uh, and other projects. We delivered all of those. Um, we, my view is, if you make a promise before an election, you, you have to deliver of it. Of course. You have to deliver it. This is no excuses. Of course. People don't want to know excuses. And often there are, ex there are genuine excuses. But bad luck. You just got to get it done. So uh, we were very focused on the economy. Uh, the economy was growing very slowly. Unemployment was rising. And then by the end of our first term, the economy was one of the fastest growing economies in the G20. Unemployment was reducing. Inflation was low. Interest rates were low. The economic uh, settings of our country were in a very, very sound condition. And in many respects, um, by the end of our first term in Parliament, the Australian economy was the envy of the world mm -hmm. uh, because we uh, had stability. And it wasn't that way when we took power. So I understand. So you achieved a lot, in the, especially uh, economically speaking. Absolutely. Are there a lot of other Lebanese members of the Parliament? Not in federal parliament, no. There have been in the past uh, in federal parliament, but at the moment I'm the only Lebanese, Lebanese member of federal the, parliament. Mm -hmm. We do have Lebanese members or in state parliaments. Yes, indeed. So in Victoria, for example, um, a second cousin of mine, Marlene K. Ruse, uh, she's a member of yes, our indeed. state parliament. And we've got other Lebanese members of our state parliament. In New South Wales... We've got uh, Lebanese members of parliament, quite a number. Uh, so we're well represented in politics, uh, but at a federal level right now, I am, only you. I am the one. It's yeah. only you and you are from the youngest. So it's, it's really something. Aren't you proud of yourself? Um, so no, because I've got a lot to do. to do. We've got a lot of work to do. So uh, you you can't sit there being feeling too proud. No, because you have because to there's, work there's, harder. There's a lot that needs to be done. So maybe in 20 years' time I'll look back and be proud. But right now we've got a big, big job ahead of us and that's what I'm focused on. Yeah. As a young member of the parliament, are you working on projects for the young generation? Well, in some respects everything we do has got to be about the next generation. And in Australia, uh, we're, we're running very, very big budget deficits. It's a problem. Mm -hmm. Our government is spending more than we earn. And, and I, I use that as an example of a young person's issue because the more debt we rack up, who's going to pay it? It's the younger generation that will pay it. So everything that we do is to provide opportunities to young people. As far as there being specific programs for young people, um, my focus is, is more on the security side of things. Um, there are so many programs designed, particularly to help young people find meaningful career paths. Um, and to, the, to an extent, I am involved in those. But, mm -hmm. uh, but I, my personal view is the best way to help young people is to provide them with an economy Indeed. that allows them to fulfil their goals. Indeed. Uh, you know, if they want to be glamorous TV presenters or if they want a career in IT. or you know, To give we, them all the opportunities. We want to give those the opportunities and, and a strong economy gives you those opportunities. Of course. When I was a young lawyer, yeah. um, I was very fortunate. We had, we had a booming economy. Uh, Therefore, I got opportunities that um, perhaps I didn't deserve, but I'm very glad I got them because once you get 
that first step, that's the hardest. Indeed. And that's what we're And this on. is what we lack in Lebanon. We have educated, talented Absolutely. young people mm. with no opportunities at all. Correct. And this is very hard. Well, there's nothing, there's nothing sadder than seeing um, educated, motivated, hardworking young people who cannot get that first job opportunity. Indeed. And, uh, you know, uh, that's what motivates me and motivates our government every day. Would you like sometime to go to Lebanon and uh, work for the new generation as, as an MP in, in, in Lebanon? <laughs> uh, I'm very happy being an MP in Australia. Uh, I, think, I think to be a very effective member of parliament, in my view, you need to understand every aspect Indeed. of the country or the area that you're representing. And as someone who didn't grow up in Lebanon, I don't think I would understand all of those little aspects. So maybe I'm better to represent our parliament here. Yeah, yeah. But what we need to do is, and this is one thing that I've been speaking to our foreign minister about and uh, even been speaking to the Lebanese ambassador, we need to be working more closely together Indeed. and learning from one another, building up as many ties as we can. Uh, it will help us. It will certainly help okay. Lebanon. I'm sure. And there's so much we can learn from each other. Yes. And there's so much we have in common. And uh, that is hopefully something that I can be a champion for in our parliament. Anyways, we will be talking about that and you will make a promise later on. You were re-elected in 2016 mm. also as a member of the federal parliament, but this time with the strongest uh, percentage uh, of growth vote. This is amazing. Why do you think this happened? Well, it was very pleasing. We had the largest vote uh, increase of any government held seat. Um, there was a lots of factors. I mean, I've, obviously I'd worked hard for three years. As I said to you earlier, if I promised something, I made sure I delivered it. We also, from a campaigning perspective, um, went to the United States and we examined a lot of the campaigning techniques that the Republicans and the Democrats mm -hmm. Engage in. It's very sophisticated. So you learned from them? And we learned from them and we brought those back here. And uh, I think that helped. It just helped get our message across. But at the end of the day, you've still got to have the right message. And what was your message in your second uh, campaign? Well, the message was um, we've achieved a lot together, but we've got a lot more we need to do. And stick with Michael, stick with me. Mm -hmm. And because we'll they happen. believed in you. They saw that during the last three years, you delivered what you promised, and this is very important. Correct. And, and I think another strength was that I was very available. So I live in Canberra for half the year, when our parliament sits, which is in another state of Australia. Uh, that's where our federal parliament is. So we've only got a very short period of time when you're in your own seat and... I made sure that I was available to all of my constituents. If they had a problem, it was my problem. Mm -hmm. If they needed to see me, and this is one of the great things about Australian politics, uh, and I hope you're experiencing it yourself, that um, I'm the servant of the people, not the master. And that's the, that's the attitude of every politician. Of course. You're there to serve. You're not there to instruct. And that's Beautiful. the important part. I hope that this message will be delivered to our Lebanese politicians too. What are your political ambitions, Mr. Seka? <laughs> uh, my ambitions, obviously, as a member of the Liberal Party, as a member of our coalition government, I want us to govern for as long as we possibly can. Because you can't affect real change when you're in opposition. You've got to be in government. So that is our first obligation. Um, what do we want to do? We want a free, open and fair society. We want people like my father, who don't have any money, who don't have any connections, 
we want them to still be able to live a quality life. Absolutely, and to have opportunities. Uh, we don't want to. We don't want a society like some others, where it's not what you know, it's who you know, or Beautiful. it's you know what school you went to and how much money your parents have. We don't. We we, we cannot accept a society like that. Um, I also want a society that values the important things, values family, Beautiful. Uh, that values faith, that values the things that have created this country. And one of the problems with the Western world is that we have forces trying to change our society far too quickly. And my view is uh, if something's not broken, why do we need to fix it? Why change for the sake of change? I mean, that's one of the things that I, is very important to me because, um, you know, if I look at the problems in our society, so many of them spring from broken families. Yes, indeed. Unhappy childhoods. You know, and, and this is one of the great things about Lebanese culture and Lebanese society. That is we have the strong, strong family. Yeah. And that's where I think we can learn more from Lebanon. Indeed. And this is why we survived 45 years of war. Correct. You were recently appointed as the chairman of the Security and Intelligence Committee. Why and uh, do you have more responsibilities today? I was very honoured to be appointed as chairman of the Security and Intelligence Committee because uh, as uh, Lebanese know very well, terrorism is a global phenomenon. Uh, Australia has not been spared uh, terrorist events. So in my role, I oversee our internal and external security and intelligence agencies. We're putting a lot of effort into ensuring that our community and our society is safe, uh, particularly safe from those who want to conduct terrorist attacks on our shores. Yeah. Uh, it's um, a job that I'm very pleased to be doing. Uh, it's got great responsibility. And the first objective of government always has to be the safety and security of our yes. citizens. That is the number one priority. And it is a very delicate uh, position. And I mean, did you meet any, since, since three months you were uh, mm. appointed, are there any real dangers? Well, I always have to be careful as to what I say publicly, um, but it's fair to say there are constant threats mm. and our security agencies are constantly disrupting and constantly challenging networks that would seek to cause terrorist events on our shores. Yeah. So in a sense, it's 24-7 that we are, we are disrupting these networks um, thankfully, we've been very fortunate in stopping a number of attacks on our shores, but um, our security agencies can be can stop 999 and still have and you only need one. one. And so, uh, as part of my role, I want to provide our law enforcement agencies, our security agencies, and our intelligence agencies with everything they need to keep us safe because as I've said, the first priority as government is to keep our people safe. We we're talking about families, we will be talking about yours, but just after this break. شفت أستراليا لأول مرة سنة 1606 واحتلت من البريطانيين سنة 1770 وقسمت مثل ما هي اليوم بولياتها من قبل الملازم جيمس كوك سنة 1770 أيضا But we focus on the quality of the time we spend together rather than the quantity She encouraged you to go into politics and be nominated as MP in a sense, I cherish family time more now than I did 
before I was in politics. بادئوا لمايكل سكر حلو كتير يعني هو مثال أعلى لكل السياسيين بالعالم وخاصة أنه بعده شاب وعنده كتير أفكار حلوة وعنده طاقة وعم بيكرس كل حياته ووقته ليخدم أستراليا ويخدم الأستراليين وياريت نحن بلبنان بنتعلم كمان منه لأنه كل وطن عاوز سياسيين بهالايام وبهالانجازات. I was expecting, uh, like many Australian programs, that the interview would be brief, that it would focus predominantly on political issues, but I was very pleasantly surprised that the interview actually looked at some of the more philosophical and uh, deeply felt uh, emotions that me and my family had uh, not only in uh, my father coming to Australia, but the things that motivated me to get into politics. So uh, it's been nice to have uh, an interview that's gone um, much more in depth and uh, has really, I think, captured why um, I've entered politics here in Australia and what has made uh, Lebanese around the world so successful. So it's been a wonderful uh, process and a wonderful interview today. Mr. Sikar, you have met your wife, Anna, a long time ago. You were just kids. And then you dated and then you got married in 2011. Anna is an Australian. And uh, like your, your mom, who's, who's another Anna too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tell us more about uh, your story with uh, Anna. How did you meet? Sure. And if it was love at first sight. <laughs> Well, we, uh, I was 21 and, and Anna was 19 and we were both working, we were working in a department store with each other while we were both at university. So we were studying and we would work in a department store on the weekends and that's where we met. And it wasn't love at first sight. I, um, I, when I saw Anna for the first time, thought what a beautiful woman and I wanted to speak to her, but she had no interest in me whatsoever. <laughs> So it took a it little. It was hard. It was hard, <laughs> but it took a little bit of effort, and then we started dating. And in the end, now we've been together for fourteen years, mm -hmm. and uh, we've been married since two thousand eleven. Uh, so she's my one true love in life, and uh, I'm very lucky that I met her at such a young age. Uh, I know that you have been. Uh, raised in, you were born and you were raised in Australia, but you have also this Lebanese uh, roots in inside. Does she get along with your Lebanese side? Yeah, she... She does. She really loves it. Uh, it was a shock to her from the beginning when she particularly would come to our, some of our big family events and, you know, as Lebanese, we're loud. We have fun, we joke around. I mean, it can be intimidating, um, but she's got a great relationship with my family and uh, she loves the Lebanese food. part of it, loves Lebanese food. <laughs> she loves Lebanese parties. She loves Lebanese weddings too. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, she's, um, she's very comfortable now uh, in, in our culture uh -huh. uh, and uh, it's something that, uh, I know that she will be determined that we pass on to our children when we have them. Yes, yeah. I'm sure of it. You, like you said before, she encouraged you to go into politics and be nominated as MP. Um, but on another side, she's, you, don't have, you work seven days a week. Mm. Um, does she accept this because you spend very little time together? She does. It's very hard. It's very, very hard because as the politician, I'm the volunteer and she's the conscript. Yeah. She doesn't get a choice. Um, 
it is hard on personal lives, uh, but uh, I couldn't have been elected without her. She was, she campaigned with me. She supported me. Um, she's a very good ambassador for me. Uh, I think for lots of people, they meet Anna and think, well, if she's willing to meet, marry Michael, he can't be a bad guy. <laughs> um, so yeah, it does put a strain on your family life. Indeed. It puts a strain on your relationships. But we focus on the quality of the time we spend together rather than the, qu the quantity. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there are some things we do. We, um, every Friday night, we have dinner together, yeah. no matter what. To make up the week. Every Sunday afternoon, we have a few hours together. Mm -hmm. But this is an important job. And this is not a job that is nine to five, Monday to Friday. It's every day, job. every night, what we're doing is so important for the country that when I get to a point that I don't want to put those hours in, I'll leave politics mm -hmm. and give somebody else an opportunity because to get back to my earlier point, we're, we're elected to serve and we're elected to serve and give every ounce of energy we've got. Indeed. And uh, that's my philosophy. And but I'm sure you're giving also all this energy all this positive energy to your wife and to the quality time you spend with her. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, I, you know, in a sense, I cherish family time more now than I did before I was in politics. So absolutely I do. But, you know, I'm not perfect. And of course, nobody's sometimes, perfect. you know, we, uh, we, we both wish we could have more time together, but... Um, you know, Judy calls, as they say. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. What are your future projects with Anna? Well, um, we want to start a family together. Oh. That's uh, a big project. Um, that'll be, hopefully, God willing, yes, something course. that uh, that we focus on in the next few years. Uh, because when you look at the when you look at the confidence and the health of a society. One way to judge that is, are people having families? Because what a way, what confidence that you're, in a sense, displaying in your country that you want to bring young people into it. So that's the project. Lots of other little projects. Of course, maybe traveling Lots of, together. We'd like to travel. I'd like to take her to Lebanon. Yeah, I wanted to ask you if she visited Lebanon. She didn't with me. I visited... Yes. Lebanon in 2010 with my father. Yeah, we will be talking about Lebanon, but after this break. Melbourne is a city of Victoria, and it has more than 4.5 million people, and it is one of the most important markets and trade in Australia. Have hundreds of thousands of Lebanese Australians, people who've got connections, family, businesses, property. They, are, they always say that roots are very important and we need to go and seek them. Then we are a better person. That is a very hard question. Very, very hard question. حلو انه تعرف مايكل سكري على زوجته انا وكانوا بعدهم صغار وبنيوا علاقه متينه وتزوجوا وانا مثل امه واستراليه ولكن تاقلمت مع افكاره وطبعه اللبناني وشجعته كثير بحياته المهنيه وكانت حده وتقبلت انه الوقت اللي لازم يكون معه هو عم بيخدم وطنه ونشوف قد ايه حلو هالتفاهم وقد ايه حلو انه المراه تدعم زوجها وهذا الشيء كثير بيساعده انه يحقق نجاح بحياته المهنيه. Well, I was obviously very honored when I was asked to appear 
uh, on a program that would end up being on Lebanese television. I thought, like many Australian interviews, it would be um, brief and surface level, but I've been uh, pleasantly surprised at how in-depth the interview has been and it's asked many questions that no other journalist has ever asked me in my time in politics. Uh, really the things that motivated me to get into Parliament and uh, aspects of my family life. So it is wonderful uh, to have been able to take part in this interview and it certainly exceeded my expectations. Okay, so growing up with my brother, Michael, he was an amazing brother, um, really challenging. Like he liked to argue a lot of things. I think he was always made for politics. I think he grew up always going to be in politics. Um, he was very supportive though. When we went to school together, he was always a really d would defend us and he was a really strong and smart person. Um, he really worked hard from cutting wood with my dad to working in retail. He was just, um, I mean, He's still an amazing person, but growing up was just a really nice brother to grow up with. He, um, yeah, just, Michael always enjoyed politics. He liked it from when he was little. He excelled in it in high school. He, he probably, I mean, he was a lawyer to begin with. I think he was always going to go into politics. He just had, he always had an ambition. He went at uni, he was in the Young Liberals. Like, he always had this ambition. He was always going to strive for it big things in life and politics for Michael, he could change things in politics and that's what Michael wanted to do. He wanted to help and change things and I mean, that's what he does. He's probably the most amazing member. He's He works so hard for everything and he's always worked hard and he still works hard now. So growing up um, in the Lebanese family, we always had big functions together. We were very close. We're very family orientated. We can continue that today. Um, with our parents and my dad, he's still very Lebanese and he and Michael and him are quite close and they cook together and they do a lot of things together. Um, I think we just grew up in such a loving, close-knit family. We were close with our relatives, we were close with our grandparents and we've just continued this as we've grown up. visited Lebanon only once in 2010 and of course you went to Pshari. What did you feel when you first arrived there? You were full of emotions. It was a very emotional um, trip and I've heard about Pshari my whole life and my father as a, uh, as a typical Lebanese person always raved about his home village uh, spoke so fondly about it. So it was very emotional to see it for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, the most emotional moment was when uh, my father took me to the home he was born in. Yeah. Literally, the room he was born in. Oh. And it struck me uh, in, in that heart. moment how, uh, how hard it was for him to yeah. come to Australia to provide me with those opportunities. But I loved it, it was beautiful and we still have family there. And you still have relatives there? We st still do, yes, we've got, I've got cousins who are still in Bishari and uh, it's an amazing place. And seeing my family's farm, the orchard that my father used to work in as a child, um, it's having that sense of knowing where your roots are is so important. Mm -hmm. And we, in this modern world, we don't value enough how important it is to feel connected, to feel anchored to home. It's beautiful. And we may leave and travel all around the world and spend different times uh, in other parts of the world, but if you know who you where are. home is, then you have a better idea of who you are. And I think that means you're a happier person to have that. Beautiful words you are saying. And I am sure uh, from my experience, 
when I travel around the world and I meet Lebanese, uh, they, they always say that roots are very important and we need to go and seek them. Then we are a better person. I couldn't agree more. It's, that's a very eloquent way to put it. And uh, if we understand who we are and where we've come from, then uh, we've got greater ideals that we all live to in our own lives mm. because our ancestors struggled. Of our ancestors struggled so hard to ensure that we still have a country. And so we owe them a lot. And uh, if you've got that sense of belonging, um, it motivates you to do better things in your own life. And you were saying that you would love to uh, visit Lebanon a second time. Absolutely. What are your plans? Well, I'm speaking to our foreign minister. I want to take a delegation, an Australian parliamentary delegation to Lebanon because I think there are some great opportunities between our two countries. Obviously, we have hundreds of thousands of Lebanese Australians, people who've got connections, family, businesses, property. Um, I think the economic ties between our two countries yeah. can get stronger yeah. and that will benefit both of us. So I'd hope that we can take a parliamentary delegation along with some good work that's being done by my good friend uh, Fadi Zuki at the Australian Lebanese Chamber of Commerce to develop those ties um, more closely. Uh, and in the process, um, we will create prosperity for both of our countries. Yes, we hope so. Um, what would you uh, like to invest, if you have to invest in Lebanon, uh, would you go and buy a house, buy a land? Well... Uh, other than your project, of course, on sure. the political efforts. Well, I have, um, I've been involved in a couple of organisations who, who are actually setting up their offices in Lebanon. Because, as you rightly pointed out earlier, uh, Lebanon has an extraordinarily well-educated population, a motivated, a hard-working population that, are, in my view, um, are there to provide great opportunities for businesses who want to invest. So, uh, yes, I'd love to buy real estate in Lebanon, but more so, I'd be encouraging businesses to set up in Lebanon because mm -hmm. the greatest asset that Lebanon has got is its people. Indeed. And, um, you know, I was speaking to our education minister and speaking to him about some of the things that, um, some of the educational standards of Lebanon, he couldn't believe it because your educational standards are unbelievable. So that's what I'd like to encourage. Yeah, yeah, Lebanese are well known for the high level of education mm. uh, in the world. And we have the best universities in Lebanon. Correct. With a very high level. And a lot of your people are underutilised. We want to be getting everything we can out of them. And uh, that's where I think those businesses would be well served in setting up there. I would like you to promise something that you will be doing in Lebanon and that you will achieve because I know <laughs> that everything, all of your promises have sure. been achieved. What would you like well, to Well, I don't do? like making promises lightly. The, the promise I will give you is that in, the next, in this term of parliament, we will have a formal delegation from Australia, hopefully that includes our foreign minister at the very least, uh, a trade delegation uh, that has the explicit task of creating closer economic ties between our two countries. I will be there. I will be part of that delegation. And uh, you've got my word that we will do that and uh, we will absolutely make sure that that delegation gets results for both of our countries. This is what we need. We need that this delegation lead to really good results with our country. Correct. Because we are in need of that. Yes. My last question, if Michael Sukkar was born in Lebanon, in Pshere, if your father Tanu Sukkar did not immigrate, to Australia, who would have you been? That is a very hard question. Very, very hard question. Who knows? 
maybe I'd be in the Lebanese parliament. We don't know. Um, <laughs> but into politics too. <laughs> well, possibly. Very, very possibly. I mean, uh, Lebanon has some of the best people in the world, some of the most um, entrepreneurial. And what I think they are sorely needing is strong leadership. And I think if you have leaders who see that potential and want to harness that potential and selflessly serve your country, which I know you have some that will, then I think the potential of Lebanon is greater than almost any other country on earth. Yes, I do agree. Thank you, Mr. Michael Sukar, for this lovely interview. Very interesting. And I'm sure you are a model, a role model to all the new generation in Australia and now in Lebanon too. Well, thank you. I'm very honored to be with you. Thank you. تعرفنا اليوم بحلقتنا على السيد مايكل سكر وهو من أبرز السياسيين بأستراليا وأصبح المثال الأعلى للكثير من حول العالم إذا بتكون تعرفوا أكثر عن هالحلقة أو عن السيد مايكل سكر ما تنسوا تتابعونا على مواقع التواصل الاجتماعي ما تنسوا تتابعونا الأسبوع القادم لتكتشفوا اسم جديد من أسماء من التاريخ Thank you.